in the squadron. They called him Bullets, but we call him Greg Kelly. Greg Kelly is on the air on the Red Apple Podcast Network. Man, Friday in the summer, and it is dead in New York City. It is dead out there. I mean, it's like COVID dead. I <laughs> just, uh, even Monday morning, Tuesday morning, really, really quiet. This is the new normal. This is the new reality, right? This is the post COVID. This is, uh, Zoom, a world on Zoom and whatever. And people moved out. And, uh, uh, I fear, I fear for this, uh, for a crash. I think it's all going to come tumbling down, especially New York. Um, you know, these big buildings, the vacancy, you know, I keep hearing it's coming back. It's coming back. And I know to some degree it has come back, but, a lot of little people. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, from the shoe shine guy to the place where I used to get my uh, my lunch in the basement, uh, it's gone, gone. They don't have the. Uh, there aren't the people present to keep those businesses going. Uh, I'm concerned. I also hate, hate, hate paying twenty two dollars for lunch. Right. I mean, it's one thing if you're, it's a sit down meal, right? It's a sit down, right? You're going to order, you maybe, uh, you got to leave a tip and all that stuff, but $22 for fast food, right? I mean, that is, that's getting to not only me, a lot of people and the grocery store stuff. I, uh, I told you, I'm not going to buy co- a coffee anymore. I'm not taking cabs. I like to, I do actually enjoy penny pinching. It's weird. I like to, uh, I'll blow a, a, a lot of money on a hotel, but, you know, I want to find the dirt cheap, generic toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, Prell, Prell shampoo, which is not fancy. It's very cheap. Even with the clear bottle, it's, it's really the cheapest stuff you can get. That and suave, suave shampoo. I was with somebody from, uh, where the hell was it? They were from Finland. And we had an exchange student at our house from Finland. And they could not believe it when we went to the grocery store how many different varieties of shampoo there were. And when you think of it, there's a lot of – another great scene in a movie, it was uh, Moscow on the Hudson. Underrated movie that nobody ever really talks about. It was uh, – oh, uh, gosh, Robin uh, – now I can't – Robin Williams plays a saxophonist from Russia who defects to America. And it's about adjusting to life in America and – America is wonderful, but lots of challenges. You know, he was a musician, an average musician, but he could always work as an average musician in, in Moscow. Uh, in America, you know, and you got to be good and we got the best and he didn't quite rise to the top and, and he knew it. He knew he wasn't so hot or he found out actually after playing with some of the greats, but they got this scene. He's new in America and he goes to the coffee aisle in the grocery store. And, you know, back then you had to wait online to buy coffee or toilet paper or whatever it was. And he just goes bananas. He just it's it's a very nice movie with a beautiful woman, uh, his girlfriend. I think is it Salma Hayek and a cameo appearance by Kaidi Tong, who is still doing the news over there on Channel 11. One of the many reasons why Trump should win this election. He is everywhere and Biden is literally nowhere. Look at their comings and goings, right? I mean, look at where Donald Trump has been and he goes to where the voters are, right? He go, he's going to them. He's reaching out. Whether it's the Bronx, uh, Detroit, he'll go into the belly of the beast, CNN town hall, talk to that very unpleasant, nasty person, Caitlin Collins. Then he'll go on the Dr. Phil show. Sit there for 72 minutes. He'll come on my show. He go, talks to Greg Kelly. He talks to Sid Rosenberg. Then he meets up with the Nelk Boys. Have you ever heard of the Nelk Boys? They're like the new Jerky Boys, but they're not nearly as funny or as good. Um, it's like a podcast troupe. Then he goes to the wrestling match. Then he goes to Formula One. Then he goes to McDonald's. Then he goes to Chick-fil-A. And then he does it again. And then he goes to the pizza place. And then he goes to court. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets arrested, and then he's uh, entertaining the president of Poland, and then he has a rally, and then he has another rally, and then he has another rally. And what the hell is Biden doing? I mean, he really is in hiding. It's a president in hiding. Even we go, when he goes overseas, he's still in that bubble, that precious bubble. To be president, to become president, I think you got to be everywhere, everywhere and anywhere, right? Isn't that, doesn't that kind of make sense? 
And uh, Trump actually, these podcasts, he's on all these shows, some of them I've never heard of. This was an 80-minute long conversation he had with three guys, three business guys. And by the way, not everybody's happy with what uh, Trump said, and that's fine. You know, we can talk about policy, and that's what they're talking about here. Let's uh, let's hear what he said on the, I think this is the, what's it called again? What kind of podcast? From all or the All In podcast. Go ahead. The more important point, I think, Mr. President, is we need high-skilled workers in this country. Yes. We need to recruit the best and brightest from the world. Every time we get somebody super intelligent from India or Europe, any country, that's three of us one are immigrants, less, sir. Yeah, and three of the four here are immigrants, um, the ones without the ties. And we can get these <laughs> great people into our country, and that's a loss for our adversaries and our competitors, and it's a gain for us. But I've never heard you talk about this. Can you please promise us you will give us more ability to import the best and brightest around the world to America? I do promise, but I happen to agree. That's why I promise. Otherwise, I wouldn't promise. Let me just tell you that... Well... America first, some of the guys in America first, they don't like this. They don't like it because they think he should be, uh, you know, hardcore. Nobody gets in. Uh, if you listen to Donald Trump, he's always, always been pro immigrant. And, uh, I think that's kind of awesome. It's uh, one of the coolest moments of the Republican convention in 2020 is when he swears in new citizens from all over the world. Highly educated, highly skilled. We want it's okay. We can be picky. We can be picky here in America as to who gets in. And he wants the best, no matter what they look like or where they come from. Uh, well, certain exceptions. We, certain, certain countries have to be, what do they call it? Extreme vetting. Would you give me the next Trump clip, please? Here he is a little bit more from the All In podcast. They tax us. We tax them. Reciprocal trade. I think we should have a reciprocal trade act. If China's going to charge us $100 tariff or 100% tariff on a car, then we should say, you're going to pay 100% to us. You know, I put on a large tariff on China cars coming in, and it had a huge impact, a huge positive impact. But And Biden only is doing the electric cars. I don't know why that is, because the electric cars, they're going to end up all being made in China, by the way. They're not going to be made here. The United Auto Workers are going to take a blow like no unions. Are. Between that and people coming in, pouring into our country, uh, unions are getting absolutely decimated. All right. So uh, he's right. He's right. He's right. Some purists out there f- take exception to certain things. And that's OK. We can have little policy d- disagreements, that kind of thing. But the overall picture, the overall thrust is uh, indisputable, indisputable. This has got to be the guy. We are in huge trouble. What will it look like? What will it be like raising two girls if Joe Biden is around for another four years? Really, what what will happen? I I have no idea. Now, keep in mind, though, they're trying to gird the entire system for a Trump victory. They realize that that could happen. And if it does, they want to make the swamp, the deep state, the permanent government as strong uh, to withstand presidential input. You know what I think the CIA is doing right now? I think they're destroying all the Kennedy files. Uh, he just came forward and said, it, do me a favor. Why the hell is Arnold Schwarzenegger on television with John Podesta? You know who John Podesta is? John Podesta, the Hillary Clinton chief of staff, Barack Obama chief of staff. He ran Hillary's campaign. What could he possibly have in common with Arnold Schwarzenegger? And I mean the real Arnold Schwarzenegger, at least the Arnold Schwarzenegger he sold to us in 2004. You know, Arnold, I was there. Arnold spoke at the Republican National Convention. Now, like so many of them, I guess, so many of them, including Arnold, it wasn't really doing anything. It was to be something. I want to be something other than an actor. I was in Germany. I learned. I saw. I had to, he wanted. He wants the frills, the frills, F-R-I-L-L-S, the stuff that goes with it. And you can see Donald Trump watching television, and it's okay to watch television, to watch television for decades and to see these problems. Melania spoke about this. She, I saw my husband becoming very frustrated. He was frustrated with America, and you can do that, and he wanted to do something about it instead of, wow, I could be something. You know who's really like that? Paul Ryan. Oh, my gosh. I have been finding all these crummy little commercials. That guy is a narcissist. That guy 
28 years old. Look at me. Look at me. I'm in shape. Look at me. I'm shaking hands. Bob, hello. Hey, Greg. Hey, you, you, you're picking on poor uh, RFK Jr. But here's what you really got to watch out for. If you ride in a car over a bridge with him, put on a life jacket. If you fly in, in a small plane with with him, wear a life jacket. And if you're on the golf course, don't turn your back. You know, uh, you're, I'm picking on him. You're destroying him. I mean, like, you're, you're bringing right. up all kinds of terrible things. We don't want to bring up all those terrible things. We know those terrible things. It is true. Well, hey, I, yeah, I, I know, your Bob. Your green hey, collar didn't. Uh, Bob, hey, what do you mean? What? Know about him. I asked him, I said, what, you never heard of this? Hey, he Bob, said, no. are you the guy whose wife I went out of my way to make yes. sure she... All right, thanks, Bob. You yes. never really adequately thanked me for that. You know One that. Mo- yes, Bob, I, I got to run, I got to run, I got to run. Um, I remember that. We deployed a whole bunch of people to get his wife from point A to point B. And he didn't even call us to tell us, like, it it worked out all right. That was something else. All right. Uh I want to get, I want to find out what happened in that Miami courtroom where it is she's yelling at, uh, <laughs> she's yelling at the prosecutors for yet another phony brief. People are really kind of, I don't really like looking at Supreme Court decisions, but the consensus seems to be that what happened today could unwind, undo a lot of the excessive uh, sentences imposed by crazy D.C. judges against January 6th defendants, most of whom did not hurt anybody or break anything. The other big hot item, J.D. Vance for vice president. You know, he did become a U.S. senator when? Last year. Last year. And what do you know when you're a senator? It's not like you're decisive. It's not like you're running anything. You, you, you vote. You're one of a 100 votes. I like Vance a lot. Is he ready to be president? Probably not. But then again, who is, right? Who, what kind of resume do you have? The most prepared person in the world right now, probably ever, is Donald Trump. Be right back. Greg Kelly on the Red Apple Podcast Network. Greg Kelly, entertaining and informative on the Red Apple Podcast Network. These horrific crimes committed by illegal aliens, uh, often against children, uh, it's it's really wild and sad and dangerous to see the media whitewashing uh, so much of it, uh, including the once prestigious, once trusted Associated Press. Uh, our friend Nick Nolte over there at Breitbart uh, <laughs> really put this out in in clear and clever terms. The far left Associated Press is lying about the identity of two migrants from Venezuela charged with the rape and murder of a 12 year old named Jocelyn Nangaray. A lie of omission is still a lie. And this report is a brazen, partisan, shameless and shameful lie of omission. Hmm. Um. This is the fakest news or fakiest news of all, he says. Headline, two men arrested in strangulation of 12-year-old Houston girl whose body was found in a creek. It's two men. Get it? Just two men. Here's another one. Two men who were seen on surveillance footage with a 12-year-old girl before her body was found in a Houston creek earlier this week were arrested Thursday in her death, reports the AP. Again, two men. Johan Jose Rangel Martinez, 21, and Franklin Jose Peña Ramos, 26, each face a charge of capital murder in the killing of Jocelyn Nangare. The fake AP report continues. The medical examiner has determined that her death was caused by strangulation. Police said surveillance footage showed the men meeting up with Jocelyn before walking to a convenience store with her. The three then walked to the bridge together where Jocelyn was killed. Police said the AP informs its readers it was not known yet if Jocelyn knew the men who were roommates, police said. Roommates. That's it. That's all the AP wants us to know. That's all the AP wants everyone to know as its story is distributed throughout the country. Two guys, two roommates. One is 21. The other is 26. Nothing to see here, folks. 
Why doesn't the AP want its readers to know everything about those charged with the horrific murder and rape of a little girl? Specifically, where is the they are Venezuela part? They came from Venezuela illegally. We all know why. If these two men entered the country illegally under his fraudulency, Joe Biden's watch, this falls hard on Biden and his psychotic decision to open the border to a third world, emptying out its prisons and nut houses. Ah, but if these two men were allowed in the country legally under Joe Biden's watch, if they were granted legal status, that's even worse. It would prove Biden's allowing anyone into the country. In his craven eagerness to forever alter the culture of our country and boost the population and electoral votes in Democrat-run states, (laughs) <laughs> this is it. This is it. He'll kill the country. He'll kill the country just to keep power. Democrats, they don't even like the country. Let's face it. They don't like it. They don't like the way it's set up. They don't like they don't like that the founding fathers were primarily men and primarily white, maybe exclusively white. That's the way it was back then. Sorry. Things change over the years and we amend the Constitution, right? We make it We make it better. We're always striving for that more perfect union. Nope. They just want to throw out the union. They just want to throw the damn thing out. How dare they? A lot of work. A lot of work went into (laughs) arranging this country, right? (laughs) Hey, um, back to that uh, rape in Houston. This did not have to happen. More importantly, this should never have happened. There is no valid reason, especially in a country facing a housing shortage and brutal inflation, to import an unvetted glut from the third world. And there is no excuse for putting 12-year-old girls at risk by either refusing to vet or simply refusing to lock the back door of our southern border. Of course, we should be accepting immigrants, but only immigrants who have something to offer, who can contribute, and who want to embrace the American dream which means working hard and following the rules. We should be using the promise of America to lure the best, brightest, and most decent. Instead, both legally and illegally, Joe Biden is flooding the country with too many people who have no desire to assimilate and only love our welfare programs and our little girls. you got to love that. The AP is this desperate to protect Joe Biden. It's a win-win for decent people. It reminds us that Biden needs protecting and further erodes whatever credibility the AP has left. John Nolte, good for you. Good stuff. Wow. They do love our girls, don't they? In the worst, most horrifying way imaginable. Greg Kelly on the Red Apple Podcast Network. Kelly, entertaining and informative on the Red Apple Podcast Network. Uh, I love this. I love this. Not for the obvious reason. It's a moment. Who remembers Maury? Maury Povich. Uh, I actually met Maury once. It was in 1989. I showed up at a, uh, I was the audience in a talk show. And I, I, I showed up specifically to give Maury Povich a, a hard time, which I did. I'll tell you about it later. But uh, this is actually a nice moment. You know, Maury Povich's show, uh, it was kind of trashy, but kind of amusing at the same time, right? Maury. And uh, listen to this. It's a scene from Maury's show and uh, a special visitor, Donald Trump, on the, uh, makes a video message. They got a little girl there who has a very rare bone disease, right? And uh, she was on one episode, and they bring her back, and Donald Trump has something for her. Let's go ahead and play that, please. So watch this in the monitor. I don't know if you know who who he is. Hi, Megan. My name's Donald. And you probably don't know me, but I was watching Maury's show the other day, and I must tell you, you really hit me right here. Uh, I think you are so beautiful, and both inside and out. I had a little something, a little gift that I gave to Maury, who's a friend of mine, and a very good golfer. Don't ever play him in golf. He's a very, very good believer. And I gave him a little gift for you, and I hope you and your mother have a good time with it. And you're very special, and you just keep it up and keep up that attitude. So good luck, and you stay in touch. So, 
Donald Trump. Donald Trump, he has his name on more buildings in New York City than any other person. And besides that, he is one of the most generous people I know. And he wants you and your mom to have a very special check. And, and when we talk about Donald Trump, when we, he gives out checks, we're not talking chump change here. So, look at that. You know how much that's for? You get all those zeros right? <laughs> well, how about that, huh? Isn't that nice? You know, the best part of it is, the best part, uh, the best part, I was watching his show, <laughs> which I totally believe. You know, he engages in the world. He engages. He's on top of it. He likes it. He likes people. He likes culture. He likes, uh, well, not this culture, but, you know, I mean, he just, he engages. He's not aloof. He's the opposite of aloof. Uh, so, uh, I think that's fantastic. I just love it. Don't you? 800-848-9222. 800-848-9222. John, hello. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, I, I would like to say that I think that uh, former President Trump should call Joe Biden an unconvicted felon and a treasonous one. Number two, I would like to say something else about de Blasio. I think that he should be sued or brought into court by the federal authorities for the one, nearly $1 billion that was misspent and not shown where it actually went. Yeah, you know, that's a good one, actually. What the hell did happen to that money and why the total lack of interest? A billion dollars for NYC Thrive, which, as I understand it, was basically yoga lessons for homeless people, right? You have to, we wanted to reduce the stress on, on the homeless people who are not, basically not stressed to begin with, right? They've given up. They're sleeping on the sidewalk. I mean, these are not stressed people. I would be too stressed and nervous to do that. They can do it. A billion dollars. And that woman, who was he married to again? Sure, Lane. That was an odd couple, right? They're not going out anymore. I guess they're separated, but, uh, I mean, he, he says, I like you. I want to date you. She says, I'm a lesbian. Get lost. I still want to date you. Like, what is that? I mean, once you, once I hear the L word, I'm like, I'm out of there. I would be out of there, you know, but he, he kept going. And actually, if you look at it, uh, if you look closely, he was sexually harassing her. He'd walk up to her and kiss her without permission and stuff like that. At one point, she said, back off, back off. But, uh, yeah, uh, thanks, John. Thanks. Uh, Frank, hello. Hey, Greg, how's it going? I just wanted to say if you've ever heard of uh, the theory that uh, John Lopez, um, I'm sorry, Podesta, is actually the father of uh, Chester Bennington, the lead singer of, what was that, Lincoln Park, I think the, the band was, yeah. It's a, it's a very interesting theory because Chester was working on a... a Wait, hold on a second. About- All right, John Podesta was the chief of staff to uh, Clinton and ran Hillary Clinton's campaign. He's got a brother who's a big-time lobbyist. He's the guy who came down on election night in 2016 over there at the Javits Center and basically said, folks, uh, we can't say anything tonight. We'll have more tomorrow. Basically, they knew they were losing. Um and his email was hacked, by the way. I said, boy, they just took all the secrets. So yikes. Um, all right. So wait, he's the father of a person named Chess, Chester Bennington. Chester Bennington. And who's the lead singer? Yeah. Of, of Lincoln of, Park. Of Lincoln Park. Correct. Why? I mean, is that known? Is that known or is that a theory? You put their pictures side by side and you tell me what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, I mean, they, even if they looked alike, I mean, what is the circumstantial evidence? I mean, uh, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, like, I, uh, so it's not the father officially, right? Not officially on paper yet, no, but a DNA test could prove it, I guess. Um, but it's deeper than that because Chester Bennington was working on a documentary about trafficking children. Now, that's the important part of the story. We're talking about Hollywood. We're talking about uh, Epstein and Weinstein, right? These guys are into hu- trafficking humans no matter what age. 
and this is all a big part of it. He was uh, non-alived, if you will, and then his best friend, um, Chris Cornell from the other band. I think oh, yeah, he died. He uh, suicided as well, and he was picking up where he left off on the documentary, apparently. All right, hold on and a second. One very, conspiracy yeah. theory One conspiracy theory at a time. Chester Bennington was with Lincoln Park, and he's dead now? Yes, suicided. Suicided. Um, all right, I, this is a lot for me yeah. to absorb. I'm looking at him right now. Yeah, he does look a little bit like him. Oh, man, he looks a lot like him. But... Other than looks, I I don't know I don't know. All right, let me let me uh, let me uh, kick that around a little bit. He's been dead for six years, seven years. You don't buy the suicide, huh? Not really. But do, do have you looked into the Podesta brothers' art collection? Please tell me you have. Uh, sure, I have. What's he talking about? No, uh, it <laughs> is unbelievable. The uh, art collection these guys have is disgusting. You mean the stuff All they own? Of, correct. All images of what? Forget about the images of, of children, and they don't look like they're alive, and they're on the floor. All right, listen, I don't know about any of this off. stuff. I got to check it out. I saw John Podesta. I, I've seen him twice, actually. I saw him once at the White House at a party, and then I saw him up at Columbia University at a graduation ceremony. And I'm like, oh, that's John Podesta. I don't know anything else about him other than he was catfished. Somebody sent him an email and said, we're working on your posing as somebody else, give us your password, and he gave him the password. And that's how one of the big hacking things happened into the campaign. It's one of the many, many, many reasons why they lost. Not the reason, but one of the many. Frank, thanks for all that stuff. Wow. Uh, Chester Bennington. I don't like Linkin Park. I don't know Linkin Park. I know that one song that they play to the Trump video. Um, gosh, what's that song called? The dun, 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 dun. It's the most dramatic thing I've ever seen. It is so good. It is so cool. It is so cool and so effective. It is a pro-Trump video that they put to Lincoln Park's song. And Lincoln Park, I think without this guy around, leans left because they're always taking it down. They're, they're on a perpetual war, war path to find this video and remove it. But it keeps popping up again because it is so cool. And it makes you want to get up and start kicking ass in, in the best possible way. Barbara, hello. Hi, Greg. I just I was listening to what you were saying about these two men who so brutally murdered that young girl and saying that that is uncivilized and that they are tearing apart our civilization that took a long time to build. And that made me think of a quote by Hilaire Belloc, a Franco-English writer and historian. He talks about barbarians, uncivilized people. He says the barbarian, the mark of the barbarian is that he will consume what civilization has produced after generations of effort, and he has no comprehension of the virtue that has brought them into being, nor is he feeling obliged to replace them in any way. That's what we're seeing, barbaric behavior being allowed and being facilitated in our country, on our children and our young women, on so many people in this country, it is barbaric behavior. It does not belong in America. It does not belong in Western civilization. And yet, for political expediency, we are forced to see this in front of us every day. Wow. Hilaire Bullock said all that stuff. H-I-L-A-R-I-E, Bullock, B-E-L-L-O-C, yes. He mm. was amazing. He was amazing. And and that that he had to say just perfectly coincided with what you were describing today. I mean, when I think I'm a mom, you're a parent of young girls. When I think of someone so savagely and brutally putting their hands on my child and terrifying them and hurting them, I can't even go further with this or I'll, I will be in tears. But that is savagery. That's barbaric behavior, something that in this country has not been allowed or accepted from the beginning of the country. And now we have it brought across our borders, mm. millions of people, and we don't know how many of them are good people and how many of them are barbarians because we know nothing about them. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's nightmarish. Barbara, thank you. You know, you make me think about something. I saw this. Uh, Milton Friedman was a great economist, right? And he made an amazing point. 
what did you say? The guy's devouring everything that society has to offer, you know, without any regard to where it came from or how he got here. Maybe that applies to the pencil. We don't use pencils anymore, but in school, I use pens. I, uh, that's all we use, pencils. Uh, from uh, 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 the nursery school, crayons, and then and then it was just pencils. I remember when we got to the sixth grade, we could use pen, pens. That was a big deal. But pencils, think about the ordinary pencil, right? Here's Milton Friedman describing how complex this seemingly simple product actually is. Go ahead. This lead pencil. There's not a single person in the world who could make this pencil. Remarkable statement? Not at all. The wood from which it's made, for all I know, comes from a tree that was cut down in the state of Washington. To cut down that tree, it took a saw. To make the saw, it took steel. To make the steel, it took iron ore. This black center, we call it lead, but it's really graphite, compressed graphite. I'm not sure where it comes from, but I think it comes from some mines in South America. This red top up here. The eraser, bit of rubber, probably comes from Malaya, where the rubber tree isn't even native. It was imported from South America by some businessmen with the help of the British government. This brass ferrule, I haven't the slightest idea where it came from, or the yellow paint, or the paint that made the black lines, or the glue that holds it together. Literally thousands of people cooperated to make this pencil. People who don't speak the same language, who practice different religions, who might hate one another if they ever met. When you go down to the store and buy this pencil, you are in effect trading a few minutes of your time for a few seconds of the time of all those thousands of people. Isn't that just kind of incredible when you add it up like that? I mean, that's a lot of different things, and we never give it any thought. It all, it all kind of works out somehow, right? It does. However, uh, we're in the process of ruining everything, ruining all the systems that brought about that beautiful pencil. I'll be right back. Greg Kelly on the Red Apple Podcast Network. Greg Kelly, entertaining and informative on the Red Apple Podcast Network. You know, Biden has been in debate prep basically for a week, going off to Camp David during the week on a weekday. Uh, that's like a it really is supposed to be done on the weekends because it's a campaign thing like you're president and you're supposed to be president to use that facility. I don't know. Uh, but all the cramming in the world is not going to help him because he's in trouble. Um, especially with his own party. This is Van Jones. Van, uh, Van is a specialist in saying some things. He's a crazy wacko liberal, but more than that, he's a self promoter. And, uh, sometimes he says something that's not insane just to, just to make waves. <laughs> uh, but I want to hear this. Cut six, please. Cut six. Van Jones, who for some reason got a hundred million dollars from Jeff Bezos. As soon as Jeff Bezos got back from space, true story, he handed him a check for $100 million. Hey, I just went to outer space. Van Jones, here's a check for $100 million. Uh, cut six. This, this, this is the entire election as far as I'm concerned. The entire world will be watching. There, if, you have, if, if you are a carbon-based life form, you're going to be watching. If you've got a functioning brain stem, you're going to be watching. Because if Biden goes out there and messes up, it's game over. If, 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 he, if he walks out of there and a week later he's lower in the polls, it's panic in the party. But if he goes in there and he can handle himself against Donald Trump, a runaway train, a locomotive, a raging bull, then this guy deserves another shot to be president because that is tough. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. If you can stand toe to toe with a runaway train like Donald Trump for an hour and a half, you are fit to be president, period, point blank. This is the whole presidency in a bottle in a week. <laughs> I would love to be described as a locomotive, a runaway train, a raging bull. Did he just say nobody could handle that? He's the number one debater in the country. These professional talkers on CNN are acknowledging that they would be demolished in a debate. And if Joe Biden can just hold his own, they're coming up, I'm sure, with all kinds of techniques that would allow Joe to hold his own. 
this microphone thing is really bothersome. They're going to be able to cut the microphone at the moment of truth, just when it gets interesting. I don't know. Uh, yes, Joaquin in Pennsylvania. Hey, Greg, you know, the one danger is this. Everybody keeps saying it's Biden, Biden, you know. They keep blaming Joe Biden, but it's the Democrat leftist policies. And the danger is that if they slip someone in, Joe, you know, decides not to run, and he's going to give it up, and they put someone else and they're going to say, oh, well, Joe Biden did it. Everybody knows Biden did it, and we got hope and change. So Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're saying... Yeah, Biden, if you get rid of Biden and it's another Democrat, it's still going to be crazy policies, right? Exactly. That's yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I, I mean, we, but, yeah, but Biden is like the face of these policies right now. We're dealing with him. And if some other maniac gets in the picture, we'll deal with them. Uh, but it's the policies under the hood that are the problem. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Gary. Hello. Hello there. How you doing, Greg? What's up? Well, you were saying before about how uh, these uh, these murderers from Venezuela, they get in and it's all Biden's fault. How do you figure it's Biden's fault? How do I figure it's Biden's fault? Well, remain in Mexico, it, it was done away immediately as soon as he walked in. Title 42, I mean, he has immense tools at his disposal, which he has put on the shelf on purpose, on purpose, because he wants to change the demographics of America. Now, if you don't know that, Gary, if you can't see that, uh, and if you can't compare and contrast the border of 2019, 2020, and uh, a couple of weeks in 2021, and also 2017 and 2018, uh, I, I, I suggest you go back to sniffing the glue. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, that's uh, if you can't see that, you got other things to worry about. Foxy in Westchester, hello. Hey, I want to tell you. Uh, very quickly, I think you're extremely handsome, but um, I'm very happy that you mentioned uh, Donald Trump uh, when he was on that show, and and that was before he was even running for president. Yeah, and I think you should run that more often, so people. Hey, Foxy, know. Foxy, hold on a second. Let's get back to the part where you call me handsome. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Um, uh, I just wanted to highlight that again. And, uh, what is it about me that makes me, uh, handsome in your view? Well, you have very intense eyes, a very strong face. And, Go on. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, and, Foxy. I'm just kidding. Thank you very the, much. What? And also because your personality blends in to make your looks even more extraordinary. Foxy, so there you, go. you call anytime you want. All right, I want I want to hear more from you. Thank you, Foxy, very much. And we're going to round out the week, round up the week, whatever however you say that with Rob on Long Island. Rob, hey Greg, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for your service, and uh, I've been watching you since geez, forever, Roseanne days. Anyway, uh, I'm like the only uh, I'm the only conservative in my family. I've four sisters, the husbands, my mom, my mom's 91. My mom actually accused me of, Bobby, did you drink the Kool-Aid? <laughs> I couldn't get over it. Unbelievable. Wait. But, um, another thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, Greg. And, and, and another huh? thing, years and years ago when this political correctness crap started, I said to my coworkers at work, we well, watch, this is going to be the beginning of the downfall of America. I can't believe it's happening right before my eyes. Yeah. Hey, Rob, thanks for the call. Great weekend. I got to bring the kids to swimming lessons this weekend. It's actually, it's actually a lot of fun. Getting there is a hassle. Coming back is a hassle, but it's fun at the pool. See you later. Long Island is more exciting than ever at Jake's 58 Casino Hotel. Get ready to zoom into some serious cash with Zoom Ball every Wednesday in June. Win up to $500,000. One point equals one entry. Two lucky winners will be drawn at the top of every hour from 1 to 5 p.m. to play Zoom Ball. Discover the excitement at Jake's 58 Casino Hotel. If gambling is a problem for you or someone, please call the 24-hour toll-free helpline at 877-8-HOPEN or tech and why.